um, among the set of actions we can take that are likely to increase the scope and scale of consciousness such that we are better able to understand the nature of the universe. Uh, one of those actions is to become a multi-planet species or ensure that life is multi-planetary. Not because I think something that, it's not, not from, from the standpoint of it just being an escape hatch or because I think that Earth is doomed, um, but there's a certain probability that is irreducible uh, that something may happen to Earth. Despite our best intentions, despite everything we try to do, the, the, there's a probability at a certain point that some either external uh, force or some internal unforced error uh, causes civilization to be destroyed um, or, 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 or sufficiently impaired such that it can no longer um, extend to, to another planet. It's hard to say, like, the, the, like let me put, put it another way, this is the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth that it's been possible to extend life beyond Earth. Before this, it was not possible. How long will this window be open? It may be open for a long time, or it may be open for a short time. I think we should, it, it would be wise to assume that it is open for a short time. And, and, and then let us uh, secure the future, secure the future of consciousness, such that life of, the light of consciousness is not extinguished. And we should do, try to do this as quickly as possible. That's my view. I think it's very important um, that we go out into space as a civilization and uh, the reason is not the one that you that I think is very common. There are many reasons that are, that are given. One of the reasons that is out there and it's a very old idea and one of the people who first articulated it um, very uh, well was Arthur C. Clarke. He said all civilizations become spacefaring or extinct and that even may be technically true in a long run, kind of long enough horizon. But um, that um, idea is one of the, it has kind of come to be that we need a, we've got all our eggs in one basket and we need a plan B. You know, if we had a civilization elsewhere on another planet, somewhere in the solar system, then when Earth gets destroyed, humanity will still be fine. I find this particular argument incredibly unmotivating. We, we have now sent robotic probes to every planet in this solar system. Believe me, this is the best one. <laughs> it is not close. My friends who want to move to Mars, I say, I have an idea for you. Why don't you first, for a year, move to the top of Mount Everest? Because the top of Mount Everest is a garden paradise <laughs> compared to Mars. And, um, and so, it's a, uh, uh, w this planet is a gym. This planet is unbelievable, and as you travel around, uh, the more you travel around, you, the more you see how incredible it is. And I'm not even just talking about nature, I'm talking about the civilization we built and the urban cities that we have. And, all of this, this, these amazing things. Um, and so we need to protect it. Now, and I'm not even talking about protecting it from asteroids or nuclear holocaust or anything, so although all these things are probably uh, important and valid, but we don't need to worry about that because we have something more certain that is a problem. And that is if you take current baseline energy usage on Earth today, global energy usage, and compound that at just 3% a year, then in just a few hundred years, you're gonna to have to cover the entire surface of the Earth in solar cells. That's how powerful compounding is. So, and by the way, we have been growing energy usage at a few percent a year for a long time. So, and, and, we, and we, our civilization has a lot of advantages because we increase our energy usage. The human body, if we, in a state of nature, if you are just an animal in the state of nature, your body, your metabolic rate, uses about 100 watts of power. But a modern person living in a developed country, you actually use 
you're, 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 you're all in civilizational per capita metabolic rate is 11,000 watts. We use a lot of energy. That's about as much energy as a blue whale uses. And so we have, you know, there are billions of us and most of us don't even, aren't even really living uh, in the kind of lifestyle of a developed country yet, but they will be very soon. We hope they will be, we want them to. And so you're gonna face a choice and you won't face this choice and I won't face this choice, but your grandchildren's grandchildren will face this choice. Do you want to live in a world of stasis or do you want to have a trillion humans living in the solar system? Um, th there are so many things to worry about, so many things to be concerned about. Um, there's, there are many troubles in the world, of course, and we, th these are important and we need to solve them. But we also need things that make us ex excited to be alive, that make us glad to wake up in the morning um, and be fired up about the future and, and think, yeah, the future is going to be great. You know, and, and this space exploration is one of those things. Um, and becoming a, a space-faring civilization, being out there among the stars, this is one of the things that I, I know makes, makes me glad to be alive. I think it makes many people glad to be alive. It's one of the best things. And there's, there's really, we're, we're, we're faced with a choice. Which future do you want? Do you want the future where we become a space-faring civilization and are in many worlds and are out there among the stars or one where we are forever confined to Earth? And I say it is the first. And, and, and I hope you agree with me. You know, for me, I have been interested in rockets, space travel, propulsion since I was a five-year-old boy. And I have spent a tremendous amount of time thinking about it. So it's not like I really have a choice to follow this passion. It has captured me.